Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Weaver. Welcome back to the Blue and Yellow Kitchen. In each episode, I make a dish inspired by a new book while talking to its author. And today's book is What Could Be Saved, and I'm making Thai Shrimp Bites. I'd like to welcome Lisa Schwartz, author of What Could Be Saved. Welcome, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, we're excited to have you in the Blue and Yellow Kitchen with us. Uh, tell us what the book's about. Let's start there. Well, it's a family drama about an, ex an American expatriate family living in Bangkok in 1972 whose eight-year-old son vanishes. And uh, several decades later, a man reappears claiming to be the vanished child. So that is, uh, that's a wonderful overview. And the book was absolutely gripping. Uh, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more about why I, why I chose it for the series, but um, what inspired you to write the book and how did you choose the setting? Well, uh, I did spend a little bit of my childhood in Bangkok around the same time. And um, when I first started writing this story, it, I actually started it as a short story in, when I was in medical school. And it was based on a very small incident that happened in my childhood and it was just a nostalgia piece back then. And then just a couple years ago, I went to revisit it and I just always felt there was more there because the setting was so, I knew it was nostalgic for me, but I thought it could be interesting for other people. And I had the idea that the child would go missing and that's where the, the novel bloomed from this tiny nostalgia piece into a rather complex, a rather complex story. Yeah, so the, um, the, just to help prepare readers for the book, so it does take place both in present day and in 1972 Bangkok. Present day is in the U.S. Um, in D.C., am I remembering that right? Yes, Washington, D.C. Okay, so we've got D.C., present day, the boy's adult family, now adult family, um, is kind of grappling with, is this person who... He says he is and what do we do about it and then you go back and forth in time between then and 1972 is there anything else that that readers need to know or should know to help um, help them with the backstory I don't think they need it to know anything more about the backstory I will say it's 2019 so it's pre-covid okay yes uh, and that was when I was writing it I was actually gonna yank it up to, to 2020 because it is supposed to be contemporary, but then I realized COVID was just starting to distantly sort of brew at the when I was revising, and I thought, you know, I don't know where that's going, so I'll keep it in 2019. Sure, and it would have been very tough to, um, yeah. with what happens in the book, because we don't do spoilers here, it would have been tough to incorporate the pandemic. So I think that was a good that's artistic right. choice for sure. So the reason I'm featuring this book is because I've been to Bangkok twice and Thailand, um, love it as a country and a destination, and the story of the impact of a child's disappearance, was, as to me, was just devastating as a reader. Um, so the recipe that I'm making today is not a Thai recipe. So this is not Thai food. It's, um, it's inspired by Thai flavors, and it's really inspired by the atmosphere of the book. So um, the children's mother's name is Genevieve, and she is kind of a hostess with a mostess. She is running this expatriate household with her Thai servants, and they kind of live in this bubble. So while they live in Bangkok, they don't really live in Bangkok, the Bangkok of the Thai people, they live in their own kind of little world. And so I thought that this um, recipe inspired by what she might have served at a cocktail party with Thai flavors and Thai ingredients, but a much more American, um, flair uh, might be something that Genevieve might have uh, served. So I've asked Lisa to read a short passage that will kind of set up this party. And while she's reading, we'll see, I'm gonna be assembling the Thai shrimp bites and then after we'll talk about the recipe after she reads. So set up for us what's happening and what you're about to read and then go ahead and read for us. Okay, well, the selection is about 100 pages into the book and it's in the section when we've gone back into 1972, Bangkok, and uh, it's the Friday night party. The family has a party, as you were mentioning, every weekend, and it's uh, kind of a big deal. 
It's it's in the party room, which is the only air conditioned room in the house that bedrooms have air conditioning, but this is a an air conditioned room, which again brings it more close to an American experience. Instead of everyone being, you know, hot, it's it's rather temperate in there. And the children are there at the beginning before the party, uh, be- before the dinner party begins. They're allowed to sort of mingle and- before they're excused. And this section starts when Peter, I mean, I'm sorry, Philip and Laura, this section begins when Philip and Laura are uh, sitting together in the, in the beginning of the party. Great. That's a shiny lit. Sorry. Great. No, that's great. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a shiny lady, commented Philip with approval. Laura looked. It was obvious whom he meant. The woman glowed near the center of the party room as if drawing all the light there and focusing it up. On her hair, curved around her skull in a high glossy beehive. On her lips, gleaming with pink lipstick. On her yellow silk dress. Her gloves were yellow, too and long, reaching up above her elbows. Her dress had little caps over the shoulders and a slit up one side of the skirt. The fabric was splashed with brilliant red flowers. Laura wondered if she could ever have such a dress. Their mother's dressmaker seemed to make only ordinary clothes in ordinary fabrics with round flat buttons and zippers. No knot buttons or shiny flowered fabric or petals instead of proper sleeves. Laura didn't even consider the bright yellow gloves. She had a feeling they might be common. When an hors d'oeuvres tray appeared, the lady in yellow turned from the red-headed man at her side and plucked a morsel from the decorative swirl. She held it with the tips of her gloved fingers and smiled at the Pettises, who were monopolizing the conversation in the little group, alternating sentences like a comedy team. They promised they'd return to collect us at five, Clara Pettis said. But at six, there was still no sign of them, said her husband. There we were in the wilds of Ayutthaya, Night falling and no return transport in sight. They didn't arrive until 7.15. Not one word of apology. Pretty standard, said Helen Malcolm, unfortunately. That's the tie for you, said Joan Benderby. Late for everything. There was a little silence, during which all eyes went to, and quickly away from, the lady in the yellow dress. Joan colored. I mean, she began... She didn't mean anything by it, Mr. Benderby said. Oh, but you are quite right, the lady in yellow said. The tie have a horrible habit of tardiness. Of course, in their opinion, it is no matter. For the tie, everything is sanuk, sanuk. She laughed. You know, fun. The red-headed man beside her looked tense, and the rest of the group wore faint, uncomfortable smiles. She looked around, puzzled. Oh, she said, her face clearing. You're worried that you might have offended me. Not at all. She took a sip from her glass. I'm not Thai. I'm Vietnamese. We're very punctual. (laughs) Oh, Lisa, thank you. Um, (laughs) You can see why I chose this book. Uh, The atmosphere, the the quality of her writing, the characters that she draws with just a couple of lines are so fantastic. And some of these people will reappear and actually will be quite important to the story, which we don't know at the time. But it also gives you that feeling of the Americans looking down on the local people and this bubble and, you know, the fact that it's air conditioned and these, you know, decorative swirls. So I did my best while you were working, Lisa, to reading Lisa to, to, to create a decorative swirl here. So I'm going to go ahead and show the camera my Thai shrimp bites and then I'll show them to you. So here we go. Oh, they look, they look wonderful. So I'll explain what I have. So I actually have a, um, everything's very cold. And so uh, what this is, is it's a slice of cucumber and then uh, a mint leaf, a fresh mint leaf, a piece of fresh, a fresh cilantro leaf and a basil leaf. Now, uh, if you can get Thai basil, I would use Thai basil, which has a sharper flavor than European basil, but either is fine. Um, the really bright, fresh herby notes are the things that you're, that really make Thai food really sing. And then what I did with the shrimp, I marinated the shrimp in, initially I tried, so she's, uh, the, the, 
hostess Genevieve is known for her coconut shrimp. It's mentioned a couple times. So I have a recipe for coconut shrimp. I tried it with this combo. It didn't work at all because I was combining a hot element with cold elements and it just kind of went yucky and soggy. So one of my first tips for making appetizers is either everything in that bite should be hot or everything should be cold. So that's the first thing. What I ended up doing was I marinated the shrimp with lime juice, hot pepper, and cilantro stems. So it's a great way to use up your cilantro is just ch chop up the stems. Marinate for about 30 minutes. You don't want to over marinate them because it starts to actually cook the flesh of the seafood, uh, the action of the lime juice. And then I sauteed, uh, heated up some coconut oil, sprinkled in some um, yellow chili powder. Again, this is not authentically Thai, but it's bringing the Thai flavors into the dish. And then saute really quickly, like one or two minutes on, a so on each side, just until they curl up in a little ball kind of and they are firm and then you pull them right out of the pan I drained them and then I re-chilled them in a container with some paper towel on the bottom to make sure they're very dry because you don't want kind of a drippy bite so we got the shrimp on there and then Thai sweet chili sauce and then a piece of pineapple and you want the pineapple to be very a very thin slice so that uh, so that it's not too big of a mouthful now ideally these um, uh, the perfect appetizer is really a single bite or is easy to do take two bites of this will kind of fall apart when I take my taste but it's freaking delicious so I'm gonna go ahead and take a quick taste here um, so Lisa tell us while I'm tasting uh, your mother had dinner parties like this so what do you recall about those dinner parties what might she have been serving a messy bite those are the best kind so very fresh base of the cucumber. So nice and watery, crisp texture, really bright herby taste from those different herb leaves, herbal leaves. And that the shrimp has a hint of lime, a hint of spice, a hint of curry. And then the pineapple adds the sweetness along with that Thai sweet chili sauce. So it's not super spicy, but it has just a really nice balance. Again, I was a child, so I wasn't really invited to the dinner part of the party. I, we had our dinner earlier, and then later on we would have, you know, maybe leftovers. Um, but they would be serving. Oh, my mother loved Thai food so much, but the it's too hot for most Americans or the Europeans that we would have um, at the dinner parties. So there wasn't a lot of Thai food, authentic Thai food, at the dinner parties. Um, and we would have there would be drinks beforehand. That was the part that we were really the children were really part of where we would be milling around and uh, presenting ourselves to the the adults who would ask us really boring questions about school and all that kind of stuff but there would be mixed drinks of course uh, a lot of gin and tonic gin and tonic was the drink and then they would all uh, disappear and they would all stay in the party room and we would be ushered away um, great so so um, before we go, Lisa, tell us a little bit about your writing process. Do you plot out your books in advance? Do you kind of start and write and then add plot? You know, kind of what was the process for this? You said it started as a kind of a short story idea, but tell us a little bit more about the actual craft of, of, of this novel. Uh, I think I tend to, I want to write from beginning to end, never will happen. Um, I'm more... I more write like a, a drop of something onto a napkin that just bleeds out. Uh, but in this case, I was a little more organized than usual in that I, I knew where I wanted to go with it. And once I had the structure, which that's the structure is the hardest part for me is deciding how am I gonna tell this story? Where am I gonna start this story? And I started it in America because I thought that was just so interesting, the proposition of here's a, a, a advantaged child who comes, you know, to this family who's been ruined by the loss of the child, really. It's just been so, such a huge um, effect on them. And then uh, I wanted to go back and show what had happened around his disappearance, what the situation was and what happened. And then I just, I would write a lot and cut a lot and re redirect myself. I wrote so much that is not in the final book because <laughs> as a, um, as a writer just, i'm laughing with you not at you <laughs> that is so true well, just let it happen and yes there are some 
there's some chapters I really love that were taken out that just they didn't serve the story. Mm-hmm. I think they were good and and fun to read, and one of them was particular was really close to my heart. But if you get too far away from the spine of the story, I feel like it's not as satisfying to read for the reader. So it's really it's good to have an editor who will sort of you know uh, kind of prod you back onto onto track every now and then. Absolutely. But, Well, thank you so much for sharing your process and for being here today. You'll find the recipe link in the Facebook video or on my website, migraineleliefrecipes.com. Learn more about Lisa at lisaschwartz.com. And if you enjoyed the show, please share it with a friend. You can order a copy of What Could Be Saved wherever you like to buy books. And if you aren't able to buy books because of budget, that's fine. You can also support authors by asking your local library to order their book. Follow me at S. Weaver MPH so you don't miss an episode and join us next time for another author interview and a dish inspired by their book. Thanks so much for watching The Blue and Yellow Kitchen.